Hi, geography students. This is Miss Wildy again. This is the second half of our chapter one review. We were in the middle of talking about cultural diffusion and we'd finished talking about expansion diffusion with um, the three types of uh, contagious, hierarchical, and stimulus. And so one other type of diffusion or way that culture diffuses by people moving and bringing their culture with them. Hence the name relocational diffusion. And Again, we talked about this earlier with the, or in the other video, about the Hindu population um, coming to Kenya, somewhat being forced as indentured servants to the Europeans, but they brought their culture with them. And you can see that on the landscape. It's, um, and it's another way that culture can diffuse. Same thing with the picture on the, on the right. This is in Paris. And this is a mosque. So, so, it may be um, from the guest worker program of, of Algerians moving to France, or it may be another group that has, has moved to France and they've brought their culture with them. And so you see it on the landscape as a result. Um, the last part is, is sort of about approaches to identifying why people do what they do, like the theories around it. So the old approaches were the human, the environmental determinism and possibilism. Um, Environmental determinism, remember, is the idea that your environment limits um, you to the point where, well, it doesn't limit, it doesn't have to limit you, but your environment determines whether you succeed or fail. That's environmental determinism. There, you have no part to play. You're kind of out of luck or you're in, in luck, but you don't have any, any way you can change that de determination. It's already determined. Whereas possibilism says, yes, your environment may limit your choices, but you do, you can make choices in order to be successful. It's not predetermined. More modern day approaches are, are more understanding why people do what they do based on cultural ecology and political ecology. Again, that, that we may make decisions or may be more, more or less successful based on what our government system is or based on our culture decisions, cultural decisions. But those have a, have a, a, better part to play in sort of why people do what they do. The very last part of this chapter is um, really not even the, in the chapter, but it's something that we need to talk about, and I sort of group it into chapter one. And so the ideas are, are um, the cartographers, people who make maps, have to figure out how to put a round object, the globe, on a flat surface, a map. And unfortunately, it doesn't work. They have to distort something. And so every single map projection we have is a different take on that that projection or that what's distorted. So Mercator, Mulweed, Robinson, Azimuthal, Fuller, and Peters are the most common, but there are hundreds of them. Mercator is probably the most commonly accepted and one that's used in most classrooms. This distorts your size. I'm sorry, not um not this, yeah, the size and the distance, but not the shape of the the shape is still, for the most part, the same. Um, and it was used mostly for nautical purposes or navigation. Um, it's, it's definitely more rectangular in base and shows more emphasis on the water, which I think makes sense for the nautical purposes. Mulweed is uh, more oval-shaped and distorts shape and angle, primarily used where um, you want accurate representation of an area rather than the shape of it. Robinson is the pretty one. Everyone tends to really like this one. It distorts everything in a little in little bits. Um, it's visually appealing, in other words. Azimuthal is the one that looks on the polar, so it distorts the shape and distance. Um, definitely more emphasis on the polar regions. Fuller is the weird one. It's it is um, it maintains the shape and even the size, but it changes the direction of the countries and continents, and so people are not really drawn to it. But again, it does it, it is another way to project the um, the Earth. Peters stretches everything, um, so it sacrifices the shape most most of the time. Um, typically, you see this more on on politically driven maps. But again, it will look very different from what you may be used to because things appear to have been stretched um, on a longitudinal line. So that's all of our um, chapter in a nutshell and as quickly as I can do it. Remember, there are two videos for this one. There's a part one and this is part two. Um, hopefully it's been helpful. Please feel free to come to class with questions that you need further clarification. Um, and I'll see you then.
拜。